I mean, Google My Business, as I said, is really good for getting found when people are using Google search. Um, the very best visibility is getting into the local pack. And this is the three businesses that show at the top of a Google search when people are searching for a local business. So if you look on the screen, on the right hand side, I've got accountant Siren Sester in, in, in the back there. That might be a, a generic search for an accountant in a location. Usually, not always, but usually the first three results that come up will be companies that have a Google um, My Business presence. It may actually be a presence that Google has generated for them, but they haven't taken ownership before it, so they can't control it, but it will be those three there. That can allow you to jump to the top of any organic rankings. You know, maybe your website isn't all that, you haven't spent any time optimizing it to get onto page number one, but getting Google My Business set up, you've got a, a really good chance of um, getting into that top three. Key things that are gonna help you get into that top three are your distance from the perceived local central locality of Siren Sester in this example. So the closer you are to where Google pinpoints Siren Sester, the more chance you have of being in that top three. That's okay for some, but not great for others who are in Siren Sester, but maybe on the edge. So the next best thing I recommend doing is getting lots of reviews. Reviews are a little bit harder to get on Google than they might be on other platforms because you need to sign in, but that's good because it verifies that as a real person. The more reviews you get, I've, I've definitely seen that people who are outside of the given area that people are searching for, just on the outskirts, they can move up into this three pack of results just by getting more reviews, legitimate verified reviews from people. Um, and actually getting the reviews isn't terribly difficult. I'll talk about that in a minute, but they do have to have a Google account. So it does limit the amount of people. And like Facebook, it tends to be once people are on Facebook, they've got the account already. So they're on Facebook and um, many people have Facebook accounts. So it's, it's less of an issue to get reviews on that. Um, you also get a knowledge panel as well. So the, the other example on there is the uh, Chartered Accountant McGill's. And when people search for that, specifically by name, they'll get this knowledge panel appearing on the right. And that gives you a lot more details, key details about that business. Particularly contact information is really useful. It means people don't need to dive into the website for doing that. But also if you've got any reviews they're gonna show on there, if you're posting images, um, I'm gonna talk about offers and events that you can post on your profile, they'll all appear there too. Plus people can ask you questions. So it becomes um, quite a main panel that gives the key details about your business. Also, having a Google My Business profile that's well um, set out, you've got full details in there, plus you've got reviews, that can actually be a small factor in normal, regular search optimization as well. So having a good profile may improve the organic ranking of your website as well. It is a small factor, but everything counts. Okay, so let's just um, point out some key things that I think are worth mentioning when you review your Google My Business profile. I did an extensive hour long version of this for our club members uh, as a webinar, um, and I'm gonna try and condense, it, condense uh, it into a few minutes here, but I'll do my best. So um, I'm not gonna talk you through how to set up and verify a Google My Business profile. I'm gonna assume you have one right now. If you don't, just email me. Um, and I'll just help you get set up with that bit or talk, talk you through any of those steps. But to be honest, a lot of people have them, they just haven't done anything with it. It's like a lot of these services, you set up an account and then you just leave it and you don't optimize it. So this is your chance. So first of all, look at the title. What have you got in there? Typically speaking, it's going to be the official company name. In our case, that would be rather inventive limited. I don't see the point of having limited in there. It doesn't mean anything to any anyone else. And so maybe it suggests that we're um, slightly more official company because we've got limited in there, but it doesn't help me from a, a marketing perspective or a search engine optimizations perspective. So I've put in the word marketing, rather inventive marketing, because it's just gonna help tie our profile to what people are searching for if they're searching for marketing in, a, in Siren Sester, or they are, when they're looking at a bunch of profiles, having marketing in the actual company title, it's just gonna stand out a little, little bit more. It may be if you're a bed and breakfast that you want to make sure that's in the title. Even if that's not your official company name, 
I would try and make your company name as people would know you or as they might type it into a Google search engine. So the way I look at it, company name in the shortest form possible plus any relevant keywords. The next things, and these, this is really important actually, is to make sure you look at your categories. Now the first category is particularly important because that's what people will see on your profile, but all the other categories are important as well. So make sure you add as many as are relevant to your business. Uh, they do help ranking in that in when people are searching for you as well. So if you're not in the right category, then it's going to make it a bit more difficult to be found when people are doing a, a sort of a generic search for a business like yours. So it's worth looking at. Um, location, make sure your map pin is dead on right. Um, I think the best advice a lot of these mapping companies give you is to try and put the map pin near the entrance door or where people would come in. Not necessarily, if you've got a big building, you don't want it to be in the middle of the building, you need it, want it to be the entrance door. That will help people find the reception if you're a large company. Uh, if you're a B&B, &B, make sure it's accurate because when you start going to the countryside, uh, I know with some of our clients we had this, that the map pin can be way off down the road, um, usually past the premises, so it's a bit frustrating that people do that, then they have to call you up, then they have to come back, it's frustrating for them. So make sure you go in and check that map pin location is in your driveway or right next to your front door. Um, and then also you can add service areas as well. So if you're a company like mine who doesn't have a premises people come and visit, but you do go out and see other people, you can actually add service areas in there. Um, and I would recommend just trying to keep them as um, small as possible. So not necessarily putting in a broad ser uh, service area, but but quite small. I put counties here like Gloucestershire, Sirencester, Cotswold, Gloucester, and it goes on Herefordshire and so on. Um, do include your phone number, make sure that's on there. Usually you'll probably have had this in there, but a little tip, if you have a spare phone number, some businesses have additional phone numbers and are able to track the number of calls coming through from that. You are able to change the phone number to be different to the one you would normally use. And we've done this with a few businesses and it allows them to track um, the number of calls that come through from Google My Business. And the reason for it is that you can find out which source is working best, which to, uh, where, where people are phoning you from, and it helps you spend your time in the right area. So if a lot of people are coming through from Google My Business, then you can start to see it's worth your time and effort to put more energy into it. And the same goes with Facebook and any of these other profiles. If you have additional numbers or you can track things in different ways, um, spending that time to put this in place just helps you understand the volume of calls and where they're coming from. It's not gonna to apply to everyone, and if you don't have that many calls, then I wouldn't bother, but do make sure the correct number is in there and it's clear. You can also add links. You can have multiple links. You can have your um, normal web link in there. If you offer appointments or other things like that, you can put a separate link in for that. You can also add tracking codes in. I don't know if anyone uses things like MailChimp or Campaign Monitor for sending emails, but they'll often add a little bit of tracking code in there. So when, when people go to your website, you can see how many people came from that email marketing campaign, which the, what campaign it was, and so on. You can do the same with Google My Business. You can put that tracking code onto the links you put in Google My Business and see how many people come through from that. Again, I like putting that sort of data in because it's not revealing personal information. It's just giving me an idea about the number of people who are coming through and whether it's worth my time spending effort to optimize it. If you found this podcast interesting, then you might like my marketing club. You can join for free to receive regular tips and advice so you can become more effective in marketing your business. Pro members get access to my live webinars every single month, along with all the previous webinars I've done. It's about two years worth now. There's even a podcast version that you can listen to while you walk the dog. You can find out more by visiting ratherinventive.com slash club. That's ratherinventive.com slash club. Bye for now.